today we want to, this topic's really been on our list for quite a while. We want to talk about uh, what we call customizable package files. It's a way of communicating with somebody who does not use the 3D experience platform. And when I say communicating, I'm meaning how do I take files that I'm working on and allow other people to collaborate and work on them as well. And then give us back uh, the files once they're changed. So we're gonna, we're gonna talk a little bit about that. I'm gonna just get out of my PowerPoint for a moment here. And we're, we're back into, into SOLIDWORKS here. So let's imagine for a moment that I'm working on this assembly, yet I have an external vendor or a partner or even just a designer somewhere else in the world that I want to share this with because they're going to be responsible for the design and drawings on certain aspects of this. So I have this in, entire assembly and it's in the 3D experience platform. Now, what that really means is it's in my data management system. It's locked down, it has rev control. You can see that rev dash on each item that's listed there. Now, how do I give it to somebody who's not part of my environment? They're not part of PDM, they're not part of my cloud. That happens all the time, right? You're not gonna let everybody you know into your data. Some you may trust enough, some you may not. So there's this concept in 3D experience called package files. And package files is a special type of, if you wanna kind of equate it to SOLIDWORKS, like a pack and go or a zip file, but it's special. So what I want to do is I wanna be able to send this to Alex so that Alex can make changes on the assembly and send it back. But I also want to control what he can change. Now, inside the 3D Experience platform, My Session panel, there's a toolbar at the bottom called the Action Bar. And on that, the Tools toolbar is where we both import and export packages. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to export this assembly as a package. Now, what this is going to do is allow me to let's go here. This should launch a application that will uh, allow me to generate the package file. Okay. Now, it is already open, so let me, uh, let's see here. Oh, okay. I should read the message, silly. A Alex, you could call me out on that, really, honestly. Here, let's let's show everyone what I was doing wrong. It says, hey, Mr. Silly, save the files so you can do this. So let me do a quick uh, quick save to the platform. Uh, I'll be I honest, I didn't, I didn't even see that pop up either. So. <laughs> well, I, I've, I've gotten so used to ignoring uh, certain things that I... Uh, I don't know, just ignored it, I guess. Um, so we'll we'll lock it, we'll save it, and we'll put it out on the platform where it belongs. Um, obviously, that's a requirement, right? You don't want any uh, unopened changes uh, that are kind of just sitting there, right? Um, you want to make sure that uh, if something's modified in your local cache, that you've got all those changes out to the platform at this point, right? So we have just one one file that we're dealing with now um, that we need to save to the platform, and we'll go ahead and uh, and do that. I'm just looking at uh, let's see what's what it's saying is modified here. It says a bunch of the drawings and so are modified, and that's fine. We'll just get everything saved up. There's a bunch of drawings related to this, and that's part of the demonstration today. Is that they're you know, as you can see in the structure, it's an assembly with a subassembly and a bunch of parts, but we need to kind of isolate this and extract all the uh, drawings along with it. So the system's gonna allow us to do that and I'll go ahead and unlock this. Okay, so now we should be good to go. I wanna take the assembly and we're gonna export as a package. Uh, should be no message that comes up, but what you're gonna see 
is uh, what, what we call SOLIDWORKS Exchange or a CAD Exchange tool. What this allows us to do is not only look at the structure, but determine what files I want you to have access to, Alex. Now, we're taking this out of the 3D Experience platform, so I want to be very clear about what you can and can't modify. So I'm going to say, you know what, you can edit these files. So this is a subassembly. Um, we're going to give you edit capabilities on all of the components in this subassembly because you're responsible for those subassemblies. But I also want to include any drawings uh, that are related to those subassemblies as well, right? Because you're responsible for those. So if I pick that subassembly in parts, there's a little add drawings button up here. And you'll see this thing will, will kind of run. And it says, oh, it found four drawings. And if you can see at the bottom here, it says, okay, here are the four drawings that uh, I came up with. And it's just you using the, the open drawing functionality built into the platform so that you can uh, decide, uh, do we want to send these for edit or do we want to uh, lock them down? Okay. So overall, two assemblies, sub-assemblies, 16 parts, four drawings will be sent. Now we have to determine where we want to store this. So I'm have the option of storing this in 3D Drive. Uh, 3D Drive, we'll talk a little bit more later about the terminology here, but it's like a, like a Dropbox, like a external sharing application. This would allow you to send a link and they could download the file. Um, in this case, me and Alex are just going to actually create a file. I'm going to save it to the desktop uh, and I'm going to just give it the name. I'll just call this PKG Demo. His, his name's going to be a little bit different, but you can see uh, all you have to do is name it and the export is created. Now, just to show you that export, if I go to my desktop and I go to the package folder, there's that PKG demo.sld PKG. Okay. So I'm, I've created this for all intents and purposes, zip file, pack and go, a special pack and go that Alex is going to be able to use. Now, however you want to send it to him, snail mail, Dropbox, you can use 3D Drive. That's perfectly fine to you. Now, let's look at what happens on Alex's end. Alex, I'm going to turn it over, back over to you. Go ahead and steal the screen if you would. Absolutely. Wait for it to catch Interject up. again. If anybody's got questions, don't be afraid to put them in the chat box. All right, so you guys should be seeing my screen now. Um, so I have, for, for this demonstration, I have logged out of the 3D experience to show what it would look like on a user's uh, PC who is not using 3D experience, but they are using a seat of standard desktop SOLIDWORKS. Um, so they will have the uh, 3D exchange, 3D experience exchange application add-in. Uh, you'll do an import package, and it's gonna ask where it is and what the name of it is. So I'm gonna say, uh, he sent it to me via email, and I saved it on my desktop. So I'm going to go to my desktop, and it's this guy here. Make sure the package name matches. Um, I found out earlier that if this doesn't update for you and the package name doesn't match, it won't open. Um, so heads up. Oh, because we did a trial run of this earlier, it's now allowing me to re-import it. Um, so for all intents and purposes, we will just open up the one that I had. So this is what it will look like in the uh, exchange. And we are going to open this. And you can open it the exact same way uh, that you would open from 3D Experience. Click and drag in. Uh, we've created an exploded view. Uh, and we've also changed some of the, uh, the parts around from, from what he had uh, previously. And, and including in this, we've also done uh, a drawing. So if I go to open drawing here, it'll it'll find the drawing that I created here, um, created the bill of materials, put some call outs on it. And additionally, we also uh, made some changes to this component as well. Uh, it was previously a gray color, now we've made it red, and we've changed the thread size from uh, M5 to an M6. And then with this, this also has the uh, drawing updated uh, where we 
note, noted the uh, color change and we did a cross-section view showing the uh, the tapped holes. Alex, what happens if you open up one of those read-only files? What, is, what does it say to you? Does it show up read-only inside of SOLIDWORKS if you were to open up any of those? Well, we're going to find out. Let's take a look at the overall assembly here. Yep, it does say read only here up at the top. So, so I mean that's that's huge, right? I mean you're you're controlling what the user on the other end can even change. But what's really nice about it too is I can still open this part from here, and that part's not read only. I can make the changes that I need to from that. It's recognizing the individual parts within the assembly that I can change. Now, I guess, I guess, Alex, the other thing for clarity for everyone, you did this, but you didn't log into the 3D Experience platform. You're not using the 3D Experience platform. You have no connector installed to the 3D Experience platform. Right. Maybe you could explain how, how did we, what, what happened here? How did we get there? How did we log out? Uh, no, how did we how did we get to the point where I could import something from 3D Experience without owning it? Oh, we had to use the 3D Experience Exchange application. And it's an add-in that can be downloaded. Great. Yeah. Easy download. Um, so from here, uh, all the changes that I wanted to make, uh, that I was allowed to make, uh, have been made. So I'm not going to save on that one because I didn't make any changes. But then we're going to go to package and export. And it's going to ask me, okay, how do you want to export this? You know, where do you want to export it to? And I'm going to change this one to underscore updated. So this is the same type of package file that Kevin sent to me. So now this is saved to my desktop and we're going to do a little magic here. I'm going to stop sharing. And in the process, Kevin's going to get that file and he's going to start sharing and poof, he's going to have it there. All right. So I get the package file back with the changes from Alex. And just as you saw from him, you know, you've got, a status here, but the difference is because I'm a 3D experience user, it tells me the status in 3D experience. He added the exploded view to the assembly, so that was modified. He modified a sub assembly, so that was modified. He updated parts and part colors, and then the drawings associated with all of those. And then at the very bottom, he created a brand new drawing, a file that was never part of the original package. And it's even aware of that. So that that's huge. Not only, you know what it's like, Alex, if I sent you an assembly through uh, OneDrive and then I just tried to figure out what you changed. I mean, without a, some sort of indication, we don't really, we're, we're just importing, exporting and guessing. Right, right. I mean, I either have to give you a log of everything that I did and all the changes that I made or you'd just be creating a new revision of all the parts with the updated files that I sent. And new revisions are not always the best option. Yep. So, so let's look at where we do from here. So I bring in, I open the package, that's just using the same function. Instead of export, it's import. And when I say open, it's gonna open up all the modified data. So it's gonna bring it open inside of SOLIDWORKS so that I can make my choices on what I want to do. So this is gonna open a bunch of drawings the sub assemblies, everything's going to get opened up in here. So I have the opportunity to preview uh, those items. Um, we'll let this get all the way opened up here. One thing about uh, the reason why it's opening everything, Kevin, is because it's putting it in your local cache. It is. It is. So, so, so that, that makes it so immediately he has those workable files saved and then he can decide what's going to go into his uh, 3D experience cloud side to replace other parts. That's a great point. If I, if I uh, refresh my cache here, you can see 
of all of those files that were part of that import package are now brought to my local cache and I can start to make some decisions. Now, the decisions are, are, are pretty easy here. We have some symbols here that let me know where things have been modified. So you can see right here, if I mouse over it, uh, it says select replace from package to open the modified file from package. Now, before I do that, I can make, I have choices. Maybe because I know it was modified from the customer, I could come in here, create a new revision, then load the package file. That will become rev A in this case. Or if I'm going to overwrite red rev dash, I could just come in here and say, you know what, replace this from the package. It's going to go and you'll see that that uh, kind of hollowed out arrow becomes full orange to let you know that this file comes from the imported package. And I could do that for uh, both of these. Okay. Uh, this is a very simple, easy way of grabbing what you need uh, from this package and updating it on the platform. If I now perform a save, you're going to see that uh, not only does it parse the files that are there, but it also is smart enough and the platform is smart enough if a drawing exists in the local cache for any of these items, you watch the save as dialog. I didn't tell it to check in any drawings or to, to save any drawings, but look, here's all those drawings that are sitting there. Okay, I can go ahead and now lock everything I need. I've got one new drawing, right? That came from Alex. It was a new part assembly drawing that would show up in the package. And now I can go ahead and update my platform files. This process is just so different than what it's like to do manual. I don't know, Alex, in, in your, your previous life, uh, doing this when you had jobs and you had to communicate outside the building how how hard was it to send out a, an assembly and drawings and then get it back and then overwrite what was there we had a lot of duplicate files i can say that for sure we i mean it was it was constant when we were working with outside vendors or um outside engineers who were doing like uh, FEA analysis and stuff for us, we were having to send package files out and then they'd send us edited versions saying, you know, this is what we pass the uh, scenarios that you need. Well, now we have their version and our version. Do I need to create a whole new assembly? Do I need to just bring these parts in? It, it would have made things a lot more seamless and a lot less um, clunky for sure. Absolutely. I we we felt this was an important workflow to get out there because I think there are people that are going to need this uh, and this will save you some time. So uh, that's package files built into the 3D experience platform. So hopefully uh, you got something uh, out of that. Um, I guess, Kev, we're, we're, uh, we're at a spot for some Q&A. Do we got any questions we can... Nothing currently in the chat, but we did get some with registrations. Uh, and actually, they're pretty good to tie in right now. So 